Hi, and welcome to another video. Um, thanks everyone who's sending me videos that they want me to react to. Uh, today, we're gonna take a look at a short by Simon Hill, whose podcast is called The Proof. Let's get into it. Coronary heart disease is the number one cause of death in this country, in the UK, in Australia. The That's true, so? Concentration of those ApoB containing lipoproteins determines how likely you are to be laying down this plaque that is mostly not true. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to categorize this because Apple B containing lipoproteins are a necessary part of A, the immune response in general, but B, of a specific part of the specific part of the immune response, which is laying down the what we call plaques, right? Which happen whenever there is any damage to the arterial wall anywhere in the in the body, right? So trying to think if it's it's like saying wheels are a necessary part of traffic accidents. That's true, but does that mean you want to get rid of all the wheels in the world? If I asked you what's the most important cell in the body, what would you say? Would you say the cardiac cell, the heart cell? Would you say the hep hepatic cell, the liver cell? <laughs> would you say some kind of immune cell? Uh, the answer, my friends, is none of these. The answer of the most important cell in the body is stem cells because they can become any of those things and more. We are born producing stem cells, but unfortunately, as we age, our production of stem cells goes down. Fortunately, there is a way to increase our endogenous production of stem cells even as we get older. To find out more, click the link on your screen. In the artery wall that builds up over time and at some point can predispose you to having a heart attack or a stroke. That is true, but there are populations throughout history, in fact, most populations throughout history that never ever got atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, including long-lived populations, um, and um, yeah, and, and had, you know, had high LDL, high ApoB in all likelihood. Of course, they weren't testing at that time, but based on what we can tell. Through all of this research, we've been able to identify what's that threshold? Where does it become a problem where you're actually accumulating plaque in the artery. So the question of accumulating plaque in the artery depends a lot on how you're looking for it and how good the resolution is of the instrument that you're looking for in the plaque, right? And if you have a good enough instrument, meaning if you have a power and powerful enough tool, think about it as a microscope, you have a good enough microscope, you're going to see plaque in hundred percent of people in the arteries, in the arteries, in the small arteries, of the heart, close to the brain, et cetera. Is that a problem? I don't think so. Great. I want to go to bed every night knowing that the concentration of those particles is below that threshold so there is no threshold <laughs> so, so sorry there can be people with very low apoB and we know this because most people who show up in the, the hospital after having a heart attack or even four and a half years before having a heart attack had low apoB and low ldl right so there is no threshold so the 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 paradigm within which this guy is working is wrong and at the same time i want i don't want to be insulin resistant i don't want high blood pressure these are all so insulin resistance is a construct, is a somewhat meaningless term, in my opinion. If you want to talk about high insulin levels and accompanying high blood sugar levels, then now we're talking, but that actually means something. High blood sugar, high glucose is toxic in the blood and will glycate all kinds of things, right? Will glycate LDL. Glycate just means think about getting sticky. Think about, you know, caramel, right? Um, so there's going to be glycation going on in the blood cells, in many other things, in the immune cells, that's going to that's going to actually contribute to damage in the arterial wall, given enough blood pressure, which he also mentioned, right? So those two things, high insulin levels, high glucose levels, three things, high insulin, high glucose, and high blood pressure, those are things that are actually causal in the pathogenesis of ASCVD, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. LDL and ApoB are part of the immune response to that, right? So as far as we can tell. So they are not the problem unless they get glycated by the sugar, right? Other risk factors, and often people point to them and say, well, if you don't have insulin resistance, it doesn't matter. Well, so if you do not have insulin resistance, the data is very clear. If you don't have diabetes, insulin resistance, again, is a construct. I wouldn't like to use that term. But if you don't have full-on diabetes, <laughs> your risk of, getting a heart, of having a heart attack is very, very low. Not that it's zero, uh, but your risk of having any kind of heart attack, stroke, anything like that is about one-tenth it would be if you were the same person presenting with diabetes, right? What we need to understand is that the injurious component and what starts this process is the concentration of ApoB. If that were the case, then you would see 
atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in populations that had high ApoB but did not have any other risk factors, which is precisely the research that Dave Feldman and Nick Norwitz and others are doing. And so far, based on their data, you don't see that damage. You don't see the additional risk of, of heart disease at all, which means what you just said is so far, according to the balance of the data, according to what we can tell, is false. If you don't have any other risk factors based on what we currently know, it doesn't seem like the high ApoB on its own is causing heart disease, again, based on what we know so far. B containing lipoproteins, of which LDL is the most abundant. A couple of things to say about what Simon has said. Um, he has articulated a mainstream hypothesis, which is the lipid heart hypothesis, but no one can really explain to me why it is exactly that, that the body would create um, a molecule, ApoB 100 or ApoB 48 or whatever it is, these ApoB containing lipoproteins that are just there to cause heart disease. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a second. Um, the body knows more than we do. And just isolating that very, of course, when you look at people who suffer from uh, heart disease, you find all kinds of abnormalities. You find triglycerides, you find high, um, yes, you do find higher ER LDL, although it's not one of the main findings. You definitely find higher blood sugar. You find a much higher um, likelihood that that person is a smoker or a former smoker, right? So if you compare those three things, diabetes presence or absence diabetes presence shoots it up tenfold right uh, high blood pressure presence or absence if you're the higher the blood pressure the, the more likely you are to have this problem and third is um, smoking status right so in that context why are we concerned about apoB because if apoB was a problem in isolation we would find it all over we wouldn't just find it in in specific spots in the cardiovascular tree right when I say this to someone who's a defender of the lipid heart hypothesis they might use the word multifactorial so you need ApoB plus you also need something else, right? Um, and I, you know, now again, we're getting to this question about uh, wheels and, and traffic accidents. Yeah, I suppose you need tires for traffic accidents. That's true. Does that mean the best way to, to improve traffic safety is to remove all the wheels in the, in, in the country or in the city? It might mean, I mean, that, that's, that, would, be, that would work, right? Um, but I'm not sure that it makes that it's a logical leap to say that wheels are causing the traffic accidents. Therefore, we need to take care of the and we need to lower the number of wheels. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So that's some thoughts for today. Uh, thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.